America's Heartland is made possible by Farm Credit, financing agriculture and rural America since 1916. Farm Credit is cooperatively owned by America's farmers and ranchers. Learn more at farmcredit.com. Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe. Hi, I'm Jason Schultz. Are you more particular these days about the food that makes its way to your dinner table? Well, you're not alone. Just ahead, consumers make their voices heard, and we'll give you some insights on how producers are responding. We'll take you to California, where one of the nation's largest poultry producers addresses animal welfare in their birds' housing and diets to become American Humane Certified. An Idaho produce farm uses technology that lets consumers track their food right back to the field. And we'll do a little shopping in Kansas City where fresh baked bread helps consumers support local farmers. And meeting the dining demands of passengers on long haul flights. It's Bon Appetit at 30,000 feet. It's all coming up on America's Heartland. Close to the land. When it comes to food and food products, consumers want more and better choices these days. Whether you grow some of your own food in a garden like this one or do shopping at a supermarket, folks want to know what's healthier for you and is a particular product really a good value? Well, the internet has made it so much easier to access food information, and many consumers are acting on that. The dramatic growth of farmers markets in the past 15 years shows that an increasing number of consumers want not only locally produced foods, but want to support local farmers and ranchers as well. Look around your supermarket. The increase in product choices is an indication of demand. Take yogurt, for example. Yogurt consumption in the U.S. has more than doubled since 2001. And consumers have prompted labeling changes to discover more about things like sustainable farming, gluten-free products, and organic foods. Add to all of those a discussion about animal welfare. For one poultry producer in California, that's meant sharing information about what goes into getting their birds to market. This is the original chicken house. Uh, Max and Verta built this on weekends and, and after work. Um, this chicken house cost $300. His title is actually manager of live production, but it's easy to convince Kirk Lippincott to become your tour guide and historian as he shows you around this modest farm in Central California. This is the original home and poultry farm of Max and Verta Foster started way back in 1938 when Max gave up his job at a local newspaper to move his family to the country. So he bought this 80 acres and he thought, you know, what could we do, Verda, to make some income off this? Their idea? Raise turkeys and chickens to sell to local stores. For Max, that meant building a feed mill, a grow house, even a hatchery, all from scratch. Verda had this hatchery built right by her back door because every hour Verda would go out there and rotate so the, the eggs would be, have good quality chicks coming out. And so she was out there every hour around the clock and a chick takes about 21 days to hatch. And so imagine 21 days, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, making sure they're right all the time. Though empty today, this foster farm is a kind of shrine to an amazing couple who took these humble beginnings and became one of the nation's largest poultry producers. Foster Farms today produces hundreds of millions of pounds of chickens, turkeys, and other products sold up and down the West Coast. I'm very proud of what I do. You know, I, I don't consider my job as a veterinarian as different from, you know, a clinic veterinarian who's treating dogs or cats. Bob O'Connor seems comfortable surrounded by the 40,000 chickens in this modern grow-out house. This avian expert has spent the past 15 years at Foster Farms making sure these chickens are raised safely and humanely. 
with strict biosecurity measures to keep out disease, easy access to water, and a controlled environment far more advanced than those old chicken houses. This is all automated. So, you know, if the, if the temperature uh, goes up in this house, we might want to pull air in through those cool cell pads and bring it all the way to the end of the house to exhaust it. That evaporative cooled air then cools the birds and lowers the temperature of the house. Diana Shaver spends most of her time visiting close to 50 growing facilities all over Northern California, making sure as many as 20 million birds each year are well fed and comfortable. Even though we do the same, we follow the same guidelines, flock in and flock out on any facility that I have, each one is different. The weather is slightly different. The birds that we bring in, you know, their personality, their eating habits are slightly different. And it's just something you have to adjust time in and time out. That care and feeding recently helped foster farms earn humane certification from the American Humane Association. That 140-year-old organization is dedicated to the safe and humane treatment of farm animals. Their science-based platform applies 200 standards that American farmers must meet to be certified including keeping their animals free from hunger, thirst, pain, and fear, and allowing them the ability to express natural behaviors. When you put all of this together now with having the American Humane Certified uh, process and label on their products, Foster Farms is able to declare to their consumers uh, that their animals are raised humanely. It's important for Americans to have faith in, uh, in their products that they're buying that third party assurance is what consumers are looking for. We have always tried to raise chickens, even as we got larger, in a way that uh, respects their basic needs. What makes it different is we have to meet these standards 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. We're audited throughout the year. We have to demonstrate what happened last week, what happened last month, what happened three months ago. Those humane practices are being passed on to a new generation of poultry producers. Angelina Tracy is a sophomore at Fresno State University. She's among more than three dozen poultry science students taking care of about 20,000 week old chicks in this new state-of-the-art teaching facility right on campus. We walk in there, we look at their feed, we look at their waters, we make sure they're healthy, we make sure their environment in terms of humidity um, temperature is good to go. A lot of times you're out here by yourself, so you really need to be on your toes and just figure things out. I'm extremely lucky and uh, beyond grateful that I get to work here and actually be a part of something. Something huge because nobody has something like this. This is how a big barn is run. This is how big industry works. This is how we take care of our animals. This is how we do it correctly. It really is a commitment by Foster Farms and the university to provide a hands-on education experience for the students. Nowadays, there's an increased consumer focus on food safety and animal welfare. That's why large producers like Foster Farms are hoping third-party humane certifications and a commitment to ag education will help assure buyers that their values are shared and have been since the beginning. I'm actually proud of the fact that we're showing consumers, you know, look, we, we do it, we're, we document it, and it's verified. It's good for you, it's good for your family, and you can take it home and cook it that night and have no worries. We'll give up things to get quality, we'll give up less profit to get quality, and we max Verta. I've always done that. We have always done that. Ready for a little gee whiz info about chickens? Studies show that chickens and dinosaurs, like the Tyrannosaurus rex, share some of the same genetic material. And while they generally strut from place to place, chickens can race about 10 miles an hour if they have to get somewhere fast. Ask any home gardener what prompts his or her green thumb and they'll likely tell you that they like their produce fresh from the garden. Many people will also say that they like the fact that they know where their food is coming from. Well, technology is making it possible for some consumers to even track their food back to commercial growers. Our Rob Stewart takes us to a farm in Idaho where some high-tech farming is part of a project to ensure food quality. 
Would you believe that the next time you buy a bag of onions at the grocery store, you could track the onions back to the exact field and farmer that grew them? Well, you can if there's a traceproduce.com label on them. Millions of Idaho and Oregon onions, fresh from the fields, are on the move to grocery stores nationwide. And every step of the way, their journey will be tracked thanks to a traceability program created at Fort Boise Produce here in Parma, Idaho. Just find the code on the Trace Produce label and the story of your bag of onions unfolds. So then with the code on the back of the package, we can type that in at the website. Anybody who buys these onions could do this. And what we'll pull up is all kinds of uh, detailed information about those onions. So as you can see here, we'll have a Google map of the actual field that those onions came from. We also have a video of the grower and growing operation where the growers can talk about their operation, the farming operation, and how they grew the onions. And then we also have a, a shipper video here, which is actually our packing operation, which shows how these onions were packaged and uh, put in their final packaging for the consumer to see. In this era of increased focus on food safety, tracing one's food is becoming increasingly important for consumers. Each lot of onions is labeled and loaded in the field into a truck bound for the packaging plant. Once inside, the onions are inspected, sampled, and even recorded on video for potential buyers to watch on the Traceability website. After the Bioterrorism Act of 2001, with, which involved food safety, everybody has to do one step forward and one step backward on traceability. So a lot of growers and shippers have implemented traceability in their systems, but they haven't taken it to the consumer level. Joe Farmer created the TraceProduce.com program. Now he's opened it up for other growers and packers to use nationwide. The Farmer family has deep roots in innovation. Joe's grandfather, Warren, was a row crop farmer. He invented a self-propelled beet harvester, seen here from the 1950s. I like this Fort Boise brand. Today, Warren's two sons are the leaders at Fort Boise Produce and say their father would be proud that his pioneering spirit lives on. He'd be amazed. I mean, he operated with a, a 10 key adding machine, you know, was the, the closest he got to, to automated accounting. So, yeah, he'd be blown away by the technology alone, and I'm sure he'd be proud of, uh, of what we've developed. More than a million 50 pound bags of onions will pass through the plant, 2,200 bags an hour, and each one can be traced back to its roots. There's always new. Uh, mandates coming down the line. People are waiting to hear from the FDA and if more mandates are going to come. It's adding cost to the growers and shippers, but there's no getting around it. You got to do it. It's, it's what's expected now, and it's just required of growers and shippers to be able to have that traceability. Heaven forbid, you know, there was ever any problem, and onions, of course, are a very safe product, but if there were a problem, you know, it'd be very easy to to uh, recall the onions and, uh, and uh, it just adds to the safety of our product, I believe. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. I don't think my great granddad, you know, out on the sheep ranch would have thought that, you know, a consumer back in New York might be able to see uh, where the farm and grower that farm their onions on a little computer device. So yeah, it's pretty amazing. Potatoes are the most important non-cereal crop in the world. And potatoes have a long history, dating back to the Incas, who raised them in the Andes Mountains of South America. Explorers brought them back to Europe in the 1500s, and they became an important food staple in the British Isles. It's always fun to find a great product that you can enjoy and share with others. You tell a friend and soon you've created consumer demand. And the call for delicious artisanal bread products is one of those areas where consumers have prompted a growth from French breads to pastries. Take for example a partnership that sprung up in Kansas. 
Our John Lobertini says many consumers consider it the ultimate homage to Heartland Wheat. Thank you very much. You have a good day. See you next time. How do the baguettes look today? Mark Friend has had a love affair with bread for 30 yeah, years. Me, I fell in love with bread. Um, before I got, learned how, I, I tried. <laughs> I experimented with sourdough, and all I had was a bunch of stinky pots of uh, flour and water down in my basement. Following the teachings of some great sourdough bakers, he would later reshape those kitchen disasters into what Friend now calls farm to market. We were trying to find a name, and uh, Farm to market uh, was something that was suggested and seemed to fit uh, the idea of uh, uh, trying to source our products from the, our farmers that we would you know, have a relationship with. Farm to market wants you to know its farmers and the wheat they're growing. Back in the pantry, the ingredients have a distinctly Midwestern flavor. Illinois, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Kansas. What we're trying to do here is make a closer connection to the farmer. Like know who the family is that's grown the wheat, that's going into the flour, that's from the bread being sold at the store. This is a boutique bakery. Hands create the special breads here, not machines. Fresh ingredients are carefully chosen. Wheat, oats, raisins, sesame seeds. It's all important to Craig Flaker. There's a, a big creative outlet that's involved in this, you know, and that's where the artistic side comes in, the size, the volume, the crumb, the shape. Specialty products require a special commitment. Farm to Market bakes breads and rolls for 40 grocery stores and 90 restaurants in the Kansas City area. They work 363 days a year, taking off only Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Uh, what is your favorite? Rye, wheat, white, Probably dark. Wheat. In fact, we get a lot of grief because where's the ciabatta bread? Well, we brought in 20 loaves and they were gone by one and that's all there is. Many of the communities here, both in the city and rural areas, have populations that originally came from Europe. People of German, Polish, French, Russian, and Italian descent clamor you, for these hearty breads. Thank you. Armin Bagians gets handmade dough from farm to market and bakes loaves fresh at his store. Customers like that one because if front door customer walk in the store and they, they can look how I bake bread, I put in the oven and how I take from oven hot. Farm to market completes a theme at the Hen House supermarket chain. Buy fresh, buy local, even to produce that carries the face and the name of the farmer that grew it. The average item in a supermarket travels about 1,500 miles to get here, and these items are all within 200 miles. They have a sense that it's fresher and that, it, uh, that it's better for them. But farm to market is going even further, testing different ways to mill the flour, giving their breads different textures. It's easy to see differences in, in the handling char characteristics of dough. And that difference has led them to seek out farmers interested in milling their own grain. A big enough market now in the U.S. for artisan-style bread that, that there you know, needs to be a flour that's suited to that, too. But bread is sometimes a fickle partner. Our grain scalora, that's, that's one of our top sellers. Those who work closely with these ingredients from the heartland will tell you this dough is a living organism an organism that lets them know every day how well they're doing their job. When bread comes out of the oven, it uh, you know, has this brown glow to it, and uh, it's hot coming out of the oven. It's just incredible. You know, it, gives you a good, it makes you feel proud. <laughs> Let's talk about a little speed and a little superstition when it comes to bread. Today's farm equipment is so efficient that it takes less than 10 seconds for a combine to harvest enough wheat to make more than 70 loaves of bread. And an old Scandinavian tradition holds that if a boy and girl eat from the same loaf of bread, they're bound to fall in love. Perhaps a rye bread romance? 
Meeting the needs of consumers is a game that plays out in the sky as well as in grocery stores, restaurants, and farmers markets. We've done a number of stories on people who love to sample new foods on vacation, be it a resort, cruise, or on that long haul flight that's taking them on vacation across the Atlantic or the Pacific. But meeting that demand requires attention to detail and a veritable army to deliver the right food at the right time. The takeoff on any vacation or business trip gives travelers an opportunity to share in new experiences. One of those is food, and with new offerings of in-flight meals, you can start enjoying that opportunity even before you reach your destination. But providing the Heartland's best to airline passengers begins well before the plane pulls up to your departure gate. We follow specifications very closely. We want to make sure that uh, we meet the requirements and the expectations of the customer. We assign specific employees to help us produce the different types of cuisines that we have here. A uh, very talented group of people here. Sydney Ho is a manager with Gate Gourmet, a culinary catering operation that serves some three dozen airports all across the United States as well as kitchen operations overseas. For years people have joked about airline food, right? Oh, airline food. But do you feel like, I mean, when I look at this stuff here, it looks pretty good. We pay close attention to quality. Quality is very important and from the time that we receive products. There are critical control points throughout the process that we follow closely. We monitor temperatures, we monitor the quality of food. Think about the challenges of producing large numbers of meals attractive to both the eye and the palate. First of all, you need detailed organization, food that is prepped, fully cooked, quickly cooled, transported to the runway, and loaded on board. And depending on your destination, special menus demand special attention. Asian favorites, regional European cuisine, appetizers, and desserts. And if you think it's all done in large quantities, think again. Here you are preparing it in the frying pan, right? Yes, we want to make it fresh. You want to make it fresh so it goes, and then where does it go from here? Um, after we cook, uh, we check uh, the temperature, uh, make sure it's uh, all the way cooked. It's, uh, it's got to reach uh, over 165 and make sure it's very well done cooked. And then we, we take out and put a black chiller and okay. cool down in the four hours down to below 40. Looks like it's about done to me. Yes, sir. <laughs> Heartland Harvest gives chefs the ingredients to turn out millions of meals each year. Beef and seafood from the open range and ocean, dairy products from the Midwest, peaches from the South, and here at their San Francisco facility, produce that comes from farms just a short drive away. We have a great market here, uh, Salinas down the street. We have Gilroy here in California. Uh, again, everything fresh, fresh. We got a citrus, no, sir. California citrus right that's, here. That's right, right. that's right. The advantage of working with the airline industry gives you access to Heartland foodstuffs that can be flown in from across the country. It's not every day you see lobster on an airline flight. Right. We have, we have, this is a rock lobster. We use also main lobster, different airlines again. Um, that's for your first class passenger. That's correct. Um, about like a, a month ago, we actually did a very important charter for the, the president of Taiwan and they all wanted fresh lobster in the entire flight. And while all of this is headed for passengers on flights, around the world we should note that crew members have special arrangements when it comes to the food that they'll eat on board. Also an interesting fact, for example, the, the pilots, they cannot have seafood. Uh, and also if they have two pilots, they, they have different meals. Just, you know, so if something happened, Given the global marketplace in travel today, special menus from Heartland Harvest must be tailored as well to special dietary needs. That can mean anything from meatless meals to religious considerations. We have a lot of special meals, uh, kosher meals, uh, child meals, Muslim, Hindu, uh, gluten-free. As with any business, meeting those demands means setting up systems to deliver meals in a timely and efficient manner. We, we have, of course, many different stations in our kitchen. It's a, it's a large facility. We have a marinade station as well. After the preparation, packing, and cooling, the airline meals are stored until called up for delivery to dozens of planes on the concourse. Specific meals for specific destinations. First class and main cabin meals, appetizers, desserts, and snacks. 
Using the Heartland's finest ingredients is all part of an effort to reinvent fine dining in the sky. Or to put it another way, Bon Appetit at 30,000 feet. I think it's the passion that the chefs have to want to produce a product, a good product. It's the challenge of producing high volume products and having quality built into it. I think the chefs here do have a passion and they do have a culinary flair to want to do a good product for the passengers. We know a lot of you turn to us for information about agriculture, and we've got some neat things to check out on our website. Everything from Heartland recipes to educational study guides. Just log on to americasheartland.org. And of course, there's lots going on in our social media arena as well. You'll find us there too. We'll see you next time right here in America's Heartland. You can purchase a DVD or Blu-ray copy of this program. Here's the cost. To order, just visit us online or call 888-814-3923. You can see it in the eyes of everyone. Yeah, have a good day. See you next time. Woman and man in man, and America's heartland, living close to the land. There's a love for the country and a pride in the brand. In America's heartland, living close, close to the land. America's Heartland is made possible by Farm Credit, financing agriculture and rural America since 1916. Farm Credit is cooperatively owned by America's farmers and ranchers. Learn more at farmcredit.com. Crop Life America, representing the companies whose modern farming innovations help America's farmers provide nutritious food for communities around the globe.